Hi everyone. So in this lab here, we're going to be using an Alka-Seltzer tablet to determine the rate of a simple reaction. Uh, we've learned in class that to determine the rate, we do need to monitor a property that changes in time. In this case here, the property that's going to be changing is actually a mass, so that's why we have an electronic balance here. Uh, we're going to find that as the reaction occurs, the mass is going to steadily decrease, and what we're going to do is we're going to sample uh, what the mass is uh, in five second intervals. Now there's nothing magic about number five. Uh, you can take it in 10 second intervals, 20 second intervals. Um, unfortunately though, if your time interval becomes too long, you actually start losing some of the detail. Uh, if you start taking intervals that are shorter than that, let's say two second intervals, three second intervals, sometimes it becomes very tedious and it becomes very hard to track and you're actually dealing with a lot of numbers. So five seconds usually is a nice compromise. So. Uh, just to start us off here, we're going to start off with our electronic balance. You do want to make sure you turn on the electronic balance, uh, especially when you just uh, turn on this uh, balance. It's very well, it may not necessarily be calibrated, it may not necessarily say zero. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to calibrate the scale, make sure we re-zero things before we start. Uh, to do that, you can actually find the re-zero button, sometimes it's also called the tear button. Uh, so you press that there to make sure that we're all zero to begin with. So for this reaction here, I have a 100 milliliter beaker. I filled it with about 40 milliliters of water. That's going to be our sort of background solution to dissolve our Alka-Seltzer tablets. Uh, Alka-Seltzer here are sort of antacid pills uh, that you can take. We're going to be dealing with one tablet at a time. I've already taken it out of the package there. Uh, what I'm going to do first is we've already calibrated our scale. I'm going to put the beaker here on the scale as well as our Alka-Seltzer tablet. So notice that this tablet here is currently outside uh, the system. Uh, currently here, this would be the initial mass. We're going to take down this reading here, 86.08. You notice that this second decimal place here is not flickering. So if you're doing an error, you can do a plus or minus, let's say 0 0.01. That's going to be our starting mass. Now, although we do have mass conservation, we expect mass to always stay the same no matter what happens to the reaction. When you look at the balance equation, we actually learned that carbon dioxide is actually released as a gas. So what's going to happen here is we're going to see bubbles in it forming. So we're going to see that qualitatively here. As those bubbles of carbon dioxide actually uh, start getting released, we're going to see this mass here steadily drop. And again, as I mentioned here, I have a timer in the corner. Uh, I'm going to start this as I drop my tablet inside. Uh, you're going to sample uh, what the mass says uh, when this is a five second interval, and that'll give you a feel of uh, how the mass has changed as the reaction occurs. Uh, just one more measurement before we start that here is I do want to sample the temperature of the water. Uh, I just uh, got this water here uh, from the cold water tap here. It's important when you're actually holding the thermometer here, uh, you don't actually want to uh, leave the thermometer just uh, hanging to the beaker itself or else you might be sampling the temperature of the beaker itself. What we want is just the temperature of the background solution. So uh, what I'm going to do is just going to let it uh, recalibrate for a little while here on your thermometer. Uh, I know you can't see it on the video, but I'm gonna do it for you here. Uh, it's reading currently here, 23 degrees. Looking at the increments here, again, if you're doing error, you can say 23.0 plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees. Right? So that's gonna be our starting temperature reading. Right? Um, so this is T0 here. Uh, the reaction is going to start uh, the second that we drop in this tablet here. I'm going to start uh, my stopwatch here uh, as we drop it in. And again, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to track down what does this mass reading say in five second intervals, and then we're going to eventually plot it on a graph. Okay, so we're going to start it here in three, two, one. Qualitatively, you'll notice that the alka sensor tablet is uh, releasing that carbon dioxide gas. We are in an open system, so that gas is just being released uh, into the environment here. And again, what we're going to do here is we're going to track uh, the changes uh, that the um, electronic balance actually says for us here. Let's give it a second just to get going here. If you listen closely, you can actually hear the sizzling and the bubbling. And again, what you want to do is, I know the mass is going to be steadily uh, changing as the reaction proceeds, uh, but again, every five second interval here, just take down a note of what that electronic balance says there. We'll know that this reaction is done uh, when the uh, mass stops changing. So just making some qualitative observations here. It looks like the bubbling is starting to slow down a little bit. I'm not hearing that sizzle. So I'll leave it for a little while here. This reaction is fairly quick, so um, don't have to leave this for that long. 
And what we're going to do here is because we're taking things down in five second intervals, I'm going to wait maybe another 15 seconds or so just to make sure this mass reading, uh, whatever it said, is actually steady at this reading. And that way I know that the reaction is finished. You should realize why this mass here is not zero is currently because we still have the beaker, we still have the water, all that's still there. Any drop in mass from our T0 reading here is due to carbon dioxide having left. So that's going to be our first measurement here. Again, this was taken at 23.0 degrees, plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees. Uh, we're going to repeat the very same process, uh, but at a different temperature. Um, we'll go from there. So it looks like our mass has stopped changing here. Give it another 10 seconds or so just to be sure. And there we go. Okay, so we're going to continue our experiment here. Um, this time we're going to make uh, two modifications. Uh, one of them is the temperature of the water instead of being that 23 degrees or so. I just got some hot water from the tap. Uh, so this reaction is going to occur at a, a higher temperature. Uh, I was also noticing that the mass change uh, from the previous, uh, just having one tablet dissolve uh, may not have been very significant. So this time I'm actually going to use both tablets here. Uh, pretty much the same procedure, uh, making sure that your uh, electronic balance here is zero to begin with. And then uh, we're going to be monitoring the mass change. As the carbon dioxide gets released, uh, we're going to be uh, tracking uh, what the the uh, balance says uh, in five second intervals. So uh, let's just getting our starting reading here. So uh, again, I have about 40 milliliters of water. Uh, again, this one here is uh, hot water. So I'm just going to uh, sample the temperature of the water here. Uh, again, if you can, you do want to have your thermometer slightly above the bottom. Uh, that way you can sample the temperature of the background and not the beaker itself. Uh, give it a chance for it to equilibrate here. So uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that there, but this one here looks like it's uh, roughly about 39 degrees. So again, let's record that as 39.2 uh, plus or minus 0 0.5. Uh, that's just the starting temperature of the water. Um, we could um, totally just drop these uh, tablets uh, directly into the beaker. Uh, but again, I do want to get a good uh, initial mass reading. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have the tablets just uh, slightly on the side here. This is going to be the total mass of the open system. Uh, again, as the reaction occurs, what's going to happen is the tablets are going to dissolve, carbon dioxide gets released, and we're going to track uh, the difference in mass in five second intervals. So I'm just going to grab both tablets here. I'm going to get my stopwatch ready. Again, I'm going to drop it in, uh, press the stopwatch at the same time, and then I'm going to just uh, watch uh, what the mass uh, changes in five second intervals. So let's go three, two, one, go. So qualitatively in comparison to previous, uh, we're noticing that the reaction is uh, bubbling away a lot more vigorously here. That's why we actually didn't fill up this beaker here uh, overly full uh, in case it started overspilling here. Notice that the mass change is a little bit, uh, not just quicker, but it's a little bit more significant because there's actually two tablets that are actually breaking down. And again, what I want you to do here is I want you to just take down uh, uh, what you see as a mass reading. It's not going to stay steady for a very long time, but uh, in every five second interval, you just record down uh, what that mass reading says. Eventually, we're going to plot a graph of mass on the vertical axis and then time in the horizontal axis. Uh, we can track how the mass changed in the open system. Um, again, any mass loss is due to carbon dioxide. Because it is the only, um, it's one gas that's being released, uh, we have that rate uh, eventually uh, from calculating the slope. Uh, and then we can do a little bit of unit conversion work here to uh, re-express that in terms of different units, in terms of different chemicals as well. Um, so I'm just going to let this uh, go on for a little bit longer here. It looks like the bubbles are starting to slow down here. The mass hasn't uh, fully steadied out yet, so uh, I do want to just give it a few more uh, five second intervals uh, so that on the graph it should be a little bit more obvious um, when the reaction actually stopped. So, right. Again, there's nothing magical about the five seconds, but it's a nice compromise between uh, capturing enough detail uh, but also not uh, super tedious, having too many data points to try to plot for yourself here. Uh, looks like in this case here, the mass is uh, 
seems to be a little bit steady here. Sometimes the mass might actually flicker a little bit, so it's sort of within the error of the uh, mass balance itself. Again, I'm just gonna give this another maybe 15 seconds or so. We just wanna be confident that the reaction is done. Qualitatively here, uh, it looks like it's uh, just about done. So stop it shortly after 2.15 here, and that'll be your um, measurements for the second trial.